right, welcome back to uh, the show. Um, this evening, we're going to be talking about New York Comic Con. Now, I wasn't able to go because my uh, son still hasn't been uh, vaccinated, but uh, we I was able to grab a couple of people that went, and um, they will be talking about their experiences. And uh, so uh, joining us once again from the... Uh, uh, pre-show we kind of did for New York Comic Con was Joshua Howe and the newcomer, um, mm -hmm. Doug Lixer. Uh, Doug and I have worked together here locally for, Doug works for the library and uh, we've put on a Comic Con for a little small con here. So um, first off, Josh, uh, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Doug, tell us a little bit about, you know, yourself and your experience with comics. Oh, geez. All right. Well, um, I've been into comics since, you know, I can remember. I still have an issue. I remember my first issue I ever got was X-Men 127 or 128 with, uh, oh, God, was that Prometheus or, or one of those? It was supposed to be Moria Tar uh Taggart's Proteus? Uh, thought. Proteus, yes. It's been, there you go. We're talking 40 years ago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, uh, I've i been into comics. I, I thought I wanted to be a comic book artist uh, when I was growing up. And then I realized how insane the deadlines were. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I ended up going to, to art school in Pittsburgh. And um, I kind of shied away from the comic book industry uh, going that direction, went more towards animation and graphic design. And so for the last 20, 25 years, I've been a graphic designer, art director for you know numerous packaging companies, um, language translation houses. And um, actually, I worked in the art department for the little trees that you hang on your rearview mirror. So used to create air fresheners and all the marketing and packaging that went with it. Um, did that for a number of years up in Watertown, New York. Um, but then we moved out here um, for our son. Um, better better resources out here um, in the capital region in New York. So um, for the last seven, seven years now, I've been working for the Schenectady County Public Library System as their art director, marketing director. And uh, before COVID hit, uh, we did five straight years of Electric City Comic Con, and uh, every year we we saw we saw nice increases. You know, we were seeing about the last year we saw about two thousand people uh, come through the door in a six hour period. So, you know, for a small con like that, you know, even down in New York when we're talking to people um, trying to recruit, they're like two thousand people in six hours. Yeah. So. But we're That's hoping awesome. to do it again in 2022. So, yep. so we took our team down there to New York uh, last week. Or I'm I'm losing track of time now. You know, with the four day week this week. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. All right. So, um, why don't we why don't we talk and let uh, we'll start with Josh. Um, tell us a little bit about you know your thoughts of the con, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll. Uh, well, this was my fifth time back to New York Comic Con, having a booth there. Um, and, uh, you know, I had some, I had some, uh, well, not worries, but I, I was certainly intrigued with how the con was going to be. The, they talked all, all summer about having a, a limited number of, of audience members, but they never said how limited. Um, they, they certainly never told um, any of the uh, exhibitors, any information like that, they, you know, they charge just the same no matter what. So I was wondering, well, I'm, I'm paying the same for my booth. What's the audience going to be like? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, noticeable things for me. You know, I've always been in small press section this year. They did some things differently. They had a smaller section. We were in the same spot, but uh, they spread us out. They had 30 feet uh aisles which was significantly bigger um i think it's normally like 15 feet um they uh you know you you notice gaps on the floor where big companies normally were certainly where i'm normally at uh the funko line is just a <laughs> thing that exists all day uh and 
is a huge presence and that was missing this year. Yeah, um, they were one of the ones the first ones to pull out. Yeah, and then that caused like a chain reaction and people were like, well, is anybody going to show up? I mean, uh it was a noticeable difference. However, um I think at least from my perspective, it was still a very successful weekend. Um, I felt like I had a little more time, not as much time as some of my Midwestern cons, but a little more time to talk to people. Um, I wasn't fighting tooth and nail to get someone's attention. Um, that, that deeper aisle, um, made that middle area for people to hug just that much more (laughs) available. So I still had to work, uh, as much as I do in previous years, but, Uh, It was still a pretty good show for us. We, you know, we, there were some super busy moments. There was some, there were some drier moments just like every year, but I never felt like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so noticeable that there's just nobody here. There was still plenty of attendees and, and yeah, for me, it was a good time. So uh, Doug, how, you know, you've gone down as, you know, for the library uh, for a couple of years now, how was this year, you know, different you know in ex- how, what was your experience like and how was it different i guess yeah it, it was actually funny how um you know for probably if you don't count the covid years um you know i was going down every year back to probably 2015 16 um on the pro uh side with the library partnerships that they do with nypl and uh you know it it was definitely a lot different so like usually when we go down it's a thursday so the first day it's kind of hit or miss some years um i remember a couple years ago we went on a thursday and we were talking to um greg shegel and chris giarusso who have both been at our con and it, it was thursday and they're like if the rest if saturday's like this or you know is going to be even more than this they were worried, you know, that they weren't going to have enough energy to get through the week. Um, Mm. This Thursday that we went, um, still a good amount of people. I got to say, I absolutely thought that Reed Pop handled the vaccination aspect to get in very well with the green um, bracelets. Um, You had to use a separate app, which I was a little miffed about because here in New York State, we've got the Empire Pass that you can put on your phone to show that you've had your your vaccine, Um, but it wouldn't link up to that. So I had to dig out my actual card and upload it to their server. But the way they handled it, it it was very, very, very much top notch. Um, Mm -hmm. And everybody still wear their masks, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, here in the capital region of Albany, People are pretty good about wearing their masks. You start getting out into the more rural and it starts getting laggy. <laughs> yes, yes, no. um, but I'm originally from Buffalo and we just went back to Western New York the weekend before for a wedding for my friend. And nobody was wearing a mask in Buffalo. And my wife, my son, and I are the only ones wearing masks, like going into a convenience store. So, you know, and there's always that tension, but there was no tension. Everybody was like, you know what? This is awesome. We're all here. We're back. Who cares? Wear the masks, have your vaccination band on. Um, But the main reason that we went this year was because we have a new uh, programming librarian um, in place of who we used to have. And I wanted to get her into this, into the field to feel what a big con really felt like so that, you know, when we're planning our con for next July, that, you know, she can take a fresh perspective of what to grab from New York and what to change and all that and condense it down for us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I told her right away, I was like, Julie, I'm a little disappointed that you're not getting what we're used to in the past, <laughs> but it, it, it actually was more palpable for her to be able to take it in. Um, and she still, she was making her notes the whole time and, you know, on the train ride back, we're going over notes and it's like, that's excellent. That's awesome. We've always wanted to try X, Y, and Z. Um, it, it was just, it was really weird to walk into the big merchant floor at Javits and not see the big names of, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's studios or it's, uh, retailers, um, you know, like. I think uh, superhero T wasn't there this year. 
Mm -hmm. um, and what we noticed was that as we're walking through the whole section upstairs was that there was one booth and I can't remember the name of it, but it was all t-shirts. And on the mirror side of the, of the floor was the same company again with another booth. So it's like, I wonder if they kind of, you know, made a deal with them like, Hey, you know, we've, we've had some pullouts and we mm -hmm. need to fill some spots. But, uh, yeah, that, that was a little disappointing to see the scaled back, but you know, like you were saying, Josh, about the, the size of the aisles, it was so nice being down in like artist alley or in the merch area and having space to breathe. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know how they can try and maybe continue that for the future. Cause I mean, there's been some years you're down in artist alley and you're just, you know, and all of a sudden you stop and you're like, am I in line to see somebody? I don't know. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I'm going to try and waddle up a little more and see if anybody yells at me. But uh, it was great. You know, um, one of our coworkers, Matt, came with us and he, uh, you know, he's like, oh, Chris Claremont's over there. And, you know, last time I didn't get really get to talk to him because I got too nervous. I was like, there's five people in line right now. Let's go get in line. I will get you in that line so you can talk to him and not, you know, get all befuddled. So, uh, you know, it, it, it was it was enjoyable, enjoyable. You could definitely tell a change in the in the feel, but uh it, it was still, I'm glad that they still did it though. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah, agree. We did uh, something I, like that. With, with the vaccine thing, I think when, uh, when they announced that if you just looked at Twitter, uh, any <laughs> given time that week, you know, outside of the people that were anti-vax and just pissed off about that, a lot of people were just like, it's going to take forever to get inside. You know, we're going to spend it. half the day. And it didn't. They had no. they had so much. They even had like a block set up, pop up set up, like a block away yeah. that you could go get your bands. You could go get your bands earlier in the week. Yeah. Um, they were they were the cop. They were the um, fabric ones. So if you were smart enough not to do it too tight, you could wiggle your hand out if you wanted <laughs> to take a shower. But I'm guilty of not being smart enough. <laughs> I wasn't the first time. Trust me. I went back and I got another one. But if you didn't want to, it was fabric, you know, so it wasn't like paper. It would stay on all week. And that was fine. Um, they got people in. I mean, it was, you know, it people weren't complaining about getting in. It was it was a pretty wow. darn smooth process. And and yeah, the masks, they did backtrack a little bit on their mask policy. Originally, they said if you had a mask as part of your costume, Mm -hmm. No matter what, you needed to have your mask on top of your costume mask. Oh, no, they backed boy, down on that. that. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people were like, what? That's silly. And I, I've seen yeah. other cons that, like, if you had a Spider Man mask, you were good. That was a cloth in mm -hmm. front of your yeah. face. It's probably the same thickness of half the masks that's out there. So nobody right. was like, hey, Spider Man, get your mask on. But <laughs> everybody else, everybody else had their mask and it was. It was good. It was, it was, I was really impressed both by the people um, there, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of accepting it and, and, and making yep. the most of it and having a good time. And the, the staff that were there that were just kind of walking around with masks and making sure everybody was good. And yeah, yep. I thought it was really smooth. Yeah. I was, I was petrified for that vaccine tent or for the wristband tent a block away. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, we're going to be standing here for hours. And they're they're like, just go to somebody with a green flag that's waving and show them your app. And we were mm -hmm. in and out within three minutes. Oh, wow. So yeah. it was crazy, crazy efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for you, I, I take it they had people, you know, staff members walking around the con floor making sure that, because I, I did hear that... Um, one retailer got asked to leave because they weren't adhering to the policy. Mm. Uh, so, well, I, I, I didn't hear about the retailer, but they did have specific uh, con staff in yellow shirts. They were like safety heroes or something like that, <laughs> dedicated to pockets of the floor. So like our pocket, we saw the same two ladies for, for one half of the day and then mm -hmm. a different two ladies the rest of the half, just walking up and down the aisles. They had a thing of masks <clears throat> and that's all they did. They just kind of walked and and if they saw somebody said, hey, do you need a mask? Here's a mask. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I never saw any of them having issues. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's weird if you 
pay and set up and then cause problems as a retailer. That makes no sense. And, and there were definitely holes throughout the cons where retailers should have been. So I guess mm -hmm. I wouldn't have noticed if, if they kicked yeah. one out, but that's too bad. That's, that's kind of silly to me. Yeah. The only time I saw anybody on the floor that didn't have a mask was like the celebrity sightings or the celebrity mm -hmm. signings. Mm -hmm. um you know like they had the wrestling along the one back wall and like jim ross was there and he wasn't wearing his mask during signing and photographs and then one booth in the middle had uh some of the older power rangers and um like aisha was wearing her mask but then the guy that played rocky and uh walter jones i think is his name he wasn't wearing a mask at that time <laughs> but but it's like at that point it's like I'm kind of okay with that because yeah. everybody's, you know, everybody's followed all these steps to be in here and everybody else is being cool with it. So right. I did see Walter Jones in the floor though. And he was wearing a mask when he was up there when, when he was, was walking. Around, so, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, well, I don't know if he, now they had the new section of the Javits open, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get to make it over there or um, you were probably at your booth, Josh, but <laughs> My booth, my booth partner did. I, I, uh, I, I asked a friend to come out and help me this year. I got a corner booth for the first time. And so I was trying to make the most of it. When you got a corner booth, you need somebody on both sides just to <laughs> tackle. And, uh, he, he, uh, <laughs> he got lucky. He was looking at the, uh, he was looking at the, the printed, um, the printed, uh, program and tip for, for people, the printed program and the program in the app don't always match up. So according to the app, the Ghostbusters panel was only supposed to be about 30, 45 minutes. According to the printed program, it was two and a half hours. And he was like, that's a big panel. I wonder if they're wow. going to have a screening there. And so he <laughs> got in line and he saw the screening of the of the Ghostbusters movie. He was really. Totally right. Yep. And oh, it was wow. all because of that program. So. Uh, wow. he said that it was, you know, I didn't get to go over there, but he was really impressed by the area. It's definitely a game changer for New York Comic Con because, you know, this is that has been the one major difference between New York and San Diego. They New York's had a bigger building for a while now, but they still have had to do satellites for things like major, um, you know, major panels and going over mm -hmm. to like Madison Square and stuff like that. And San Diego does that too, but not as much. And so now that the Javits has this expansion, um, you know, I think New York used it a little bit this year. Uh, but you know, in future years, this shows that now they have like screening rooms and stuff like that mm -hmm. on site. And it's going to be a huge game changer for the con. I'm no. disappointed to hear about that. Cause we only, we only have like a couple hours in between train trips. <laughs> 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 yep. I didn't even realize that they had opened that part up yet. So mm -hmm. oh, man, yep. <laughs> but we're there it was to a work, little so. hidden. Like I, I will say, and, and some other people have said this too. It wasn't very, if you've never been there before, or if you've been right. to the con before, but you've never gone over there before, it wasn't mm -hmm. really that well, you know, there wasn't a lot of signs, so they they could definitely right. improve their signage. Because yeah, it took my friend a minute to be like, okay, where is this again? And it's just right over there. But yeah, it's funny was, you say that. Impressed. Yeah, because I noticed that too. The signage wasn't the best as it like as clear as it's been in the past. So I wonder yeah. if a lot of that was tweaked at the last minute, maybe yeah. due to reshuffling or cancellations. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. that's fine. I, I I thought the same thing. The signage was just a little haphazard at times. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause it, what's funny is I'm usually, I go down every year, usually for the auto show and I take my father down there and I always tell my dad how crazy it is at Comic-Con compared to like the New York auto show. Mm -hmm. And you know, this reminded me of the same type of level of crowd as the auto show, but you know, you usually go down that long path into the second building of Javits and you know, somebody's set up down there. So, right. Right. And they didn't have the auto show this year. I mean, no, yeah. they canceled uh, it two weeks prior. Right. And for that's the why I was surprised. Time, that, I was surprised. The con con con. Yeah. yeah, they were they were very open about, hey, if the if the auto show is happening, we're going to happen. And then, yeah, when the auto show canceled, everybody was like, uh, you know, is this is their <laughs> yeah. last minute cancel? And I mean, a lot of this year felt like 
they pulled it together at the last minute, especially with celebrities. There weren't as many celebrities. There's a lot of fan expo events that are going on this fall that have a much bigger celebrity presence. And, you know, a lot of people don't go to cons for celebrities, but a lot of people do. And from what I've heard, uh, you know, they were disappointed in the options. And then on top of that, uh, they had major issues with uh, Anakin Skywalker, uh, Hayden Christensen, not the actor, but the lines getting to the actor. It was so ridiculous. They had, um, they did not police it very well. It was even worse mm. on Sunday. They had a lot of people asking for, um, for uh, refunds just because the line wasn't very well managed and they weren't having enough personnel to keep it clipping along. And uh, so that was a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it felt like things like that were just kind of like we, they, they made the decision at the last moment to move forward and they grabbed what celebrities they could. But, you know, I mean, again, I think a lot of people didn't even think it was going to happen. And when shows like San Diego don't happen this year um, and right. a lot of the medium tier shows don't happen this year, most of the people that I talked to were like, we're just happy. We're just happy they <laughs> did anything. And yeah. It's and and most people were impressed by the level of work they put into to make it uh, as smooth of a show as it was. So I'm just happy it happened, nonetheless. Yeah, that, that that's what uh, Mike Mike Spring and I, who was on our uh, show before the con, uh, we were talking about uh, with the press. I mean, the only thing I, looking at the you know announcements that I got, the only thing that I. I guess was really upset that I missed was the why the last man panel or they mm. had like a junket. I but I, again, I don't know how they did it. Cause like, you know, we were saying last time, they usually have like a round table where the actors come and sit with everybody and then they move to the next table. So I don't know if they did that or not, but um, that was the only thing that I really missed. And luckily I was able to, you know, I've, I'm working on setting up, you know, interviews with some of the, uh, PR, you know, people who are sending out things for people for the show. And so mm -hmm. I guess, I guess when you tell them you can't come because your son isn't vaccinated and they want to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, <laughs> I will say just on a fun note that has nothing to do with COVID uh, caught from a cosplay perspective, um, move over Harley Quinn and Deadpool <laughs> Uh, Wanda and uh, Loki variants were by oh, far God, yes. the biggest cosplay this year. There were so many Loki variants and so many Wandas. It was insane. <laughs> no. um, and then the second or third and fourth place tied between Squid Game and Money Heist. There were so many Money Heist people there, so <laughs> many Squid Game people there, and I, I, you know, I really love Squid Game. I have a best friend that loves Money Heist, so I was just taking pictures <laughs> left and right. But uh, yeah, the cosplay game this year was was fun. There was a lot of good ones. I'll have to check out Money Heist. I did watch Squid Game, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. We saw there was the Loki variants were in force on Thursday. That. Mm -hmm. That was definitely between Gator, Old Man, and Lady Loki. They, they were all there. <laughs> yep. But then there, there was there was a Gandalf that kept throwing, like the little snaps, the little gunpowder snaps, and making mm -hmm. be like, "Ooh, look at magic!" And it's like, "All right, stop, stop. That's enough, <laughs> okay?" Because it it echoes in the atrium part of Javits. It's like, yeah. man, yeah. stop." <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So, yep. Um, what do you think that, you know, moving forward, do you think the, the New York, I mean, it'll probably, you know, assuming that, you know, things are continue to get better or get better, you know, it'll be back to maybe a larger show. But do you think they can take some of the things that they learned from, you know, this year and maybe apply it to, you know, make, make them work for a larger show, I guess? I think, uh, I mean, according to Forbes, there they there was a hundred thousand people less this year than last year. Last year was two hundred and fifty thousand. This was one hundred and fifty thousand. One hundred and fifty thousand. Last, last year there were zero. 
Oh well, yeah. <laughs> Last, Last hundred fifty thousand okay. percent increase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big increase. Yeah, <laughs> that's a rage yeah. success. So, so a hundred hundred thousand less than the last Comic Con, but that's still a lot of people. Um, mm-hmm. I yeah. think uh, the uh, I did hear not like major complaints, but um, you know, uh, little heavy suggestions on the lines for the panels. They need to figure that out a little more. This was their first year doing panels on site, so I would ex- I would expect some you know some issues there. So I heard that they could they could do that a little better. Um, I already mentioned the lines for celebrities. They could have some more purposeful personnel down there to keep those lines going and, and, and maybe not sell as many um, if they, if they don't think they're going to get through them, you know, my, my guy, well, that was the thing too. So my, my partner, Alan at the booth, he, he bought his ticket on Saturday for a Sunday signing of Hayden Christensen. He got like a mm. uh, episode three poster. It was going to be for his brother. So uh, he looked at the times. According to the app, there were time slots to get. Well, he got a 140 time slot. Those time slots didn't mean jack shit. He was there <laughs> two and a half hours later with still 100 people in front of him. Oof. So. Uh, I don't know what happened there, if there was some type of mix up or if there was just nobody there like trying to keep it going um, or if the whole time slots thing was just, you know, uh, meaningless to begin with. But that that is definitely something they could improve on. But, um, you know, the con space itself isn't any bigger. So I can't imagine if they go back to regular, they're still going to have 30 foot aisles. Um, Right. it was nice, you know, it was nice to be able to walk. There were times on Saturday you still got into that shuffle mode, but it certainly <laughs> was a little more, uh, you, you were able to navigate the floor a little quicker than a normal year. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll go back to normal. And people, you know, always enjoyed it back then too. So yeah. I, I'm not sure how many things they can learn this year, but you know, for, for attempting something that a lot of other cons just decided not to do at all. I think they, you know, hit it out of the park. I was incredibly yeah. impressed by, by so much of the things that they implemented this year. It, were, it really was impressive. Uh, even, even from me as a vendor point, you know, being behind the scenes, I was just, yeah, I was kind of blown away by how smooth it went. Yeah. So, yeah, everything from okay. getting in, getting – we had – because I didn't – when I saw the auto show was canceled, I was like, oh, I'm not even going to try and get into New York Comic Con this year because that will be canceled. And the only reason I found out that it was still going on was through a Facebook app. I'm like, no, this got to be an old app. So I clicked on it. And it's like – went to their website. I'm like, I can still sign up for the Pro Day. Great. And mm-hmm. uh, because it was past the date, we had to pick up our, our uh, badges at Will Call. And then I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, this is going to be a nightmare, too. You know, first I'm thinking getting the vaccine um, uh, bracelet is going to be a nightmare. Getting into will call going to be a nightmare. Getting in through security going to be a nightmare. It was so smooth. Everything just flowed smoothly. And so I I don't know if they take that juju magic that happened this year with that (laughs) and try and (laughs) extend it out, but if they figure out how to make things that smooth again, it's just going to be a better and better con every year. Yeah. So, um, any, any final thoughts on, you know, the show or your experience? Um, I gotta say it was, you know, I always make a week of it. I fly in on Tuesday. I leave on the following Monday. It was a, uh shitty start of the week it was a really bad start of the week for me ups lost two boxes of my books happen to be happen to be one box was the new book um and i i mean the day before i flew out i was just digging through boxes in my house i was going around to local comic shops to see if they had any copies i was able to scrounge up like 18 books which wasn't a lot the other box that they lost was the first box or the first book of my of my trilogy and i usually make sets at the con so suddenly i didn't have the first book to make any sets uh thankfully i had enough books at home 
So I paid, you know, the fee to fly out with it for a third luggage on Southwest. Uh, so, you know, that was a shitty way to start the week. Um, <laughs> I, I did have a little will call scare at first when they couldn't find my booth. And I was like, oh, my gosh, uh, it was <laughs> it was a momentary like, you know, mini heart attack. And I'm like, just please don't let this be an indicator that the rest of the week is going to go like this. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. as soon as the show started, it just felt like, oh my gosh, I missed this so much. <laughs> it was, it, it's, uh, I haven't been to a show, uh, certainly not of that size in a year and a half. And um, not only did I meet a lot of new people and sold my books to a lot of new people, I met a lot of returning people and they, they all said the same thing. We're just so happy it happened. We didn't think it was going to happen. And for all the naysayers and the haters on Twitter that were just like, why even do this? Well, this is why, because you had this many people that wanted to go. They had their shot. Um, they were willing to wear the mask. And I don't like wearing a mask either. I despise it myself. You know, it's irritating. I Up until now, I didn't have a job where I had to do it every day. So I I, even after a year and a half, I wasn't accustomed to wearing it for eight hours a day plus. So, yeah, that was annoying to me as well. But if that was what I needed to do to be there at the con, I was willing to do it. And apparently 150,000 other people were willing to do it. And, uh, you know, it was it was a fantastic weekend. Not to mention it was pretty darn good weather in New York. It was, oh, cool it was for most gorgeous. of the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually out there like sweating my ass off and no, it was nice and cool and just a good time. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was the first year with a corner booth and I'm like, man, I hope I don't bite the dust this year. And I didn't. And so, uh, yeah, all in all, it, it, there's a lot of things stacked against me this year and it, I still came out on top. So I was very happy with it. And, um, exhausted by the time it was over but that's typical in new york comic con it's a lot of work <laughs> yeah no i gotta agree with you josh about that weather it was beautiful we you know we came in through penn station and then hoofed it over and you know usually it's you're sweating by the time you get over to javits from penn station and this year we we're like hey this is great <laughs> there's mm -hmm. a nice breeze going down the down the streets and the avenues it's fine but uh yeah, it just it, it just seemed like everything aligned perfectly for them this year. Um, mm -hmm. But it was nice also because I usually, um, one of my old college friends, uh, he works for ILM out in San Francisco and he puts a booth out. So I always get to go and see, say uh, hi to John Gen um, out there. And uh, cause otherwise I don't see him, he's in San Francisco and you know, we've been out of college now for 25 years or so. But uh, it's almost like a little little college reunion at times. But uh, yeah, it was a great yeah. con. Um, you know, we we got to meet some new people down there, and uh, hopefully, we'll see them up here in Schenectady in July. Uh, one of the guys was uh, he created Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. I saw that. We, I saw that. we just we were like, oh. we gotta go talk to this guy because <laughs> yeah. at, at our library we have a Harriet Tubman statue because of the Underground Railroad up here in New York. There you go. So mm -hmm. we've got you know a statue of Harriet Tubman that was just unveiled right before COVID, and I was telling the artists about it. I was like, we gotta get you up here. We'll put your we'll put your table right next to that statue, and you can be like, here's a historical figure. Here's my figure. Let's have fun. So that would be yeah, great. It, yeah, that's we're hoping. So he's from Central Jersey, and he, he's like, you know what? That's not too bad of a drive up to up to the Albany area. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, Doug, I, I know somebody else that we could uh, try to get. Uh, I'll tell you yeah. offline. <laughs> okay, All I'll right. tell you offline. <laughs> yeah, I asked Chris Claremont if, or yeah. if he uh, wanted to come up, and he's like, eh. <laughs> my son went to RPI, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> well, and just so you know, it's not Rob Liefeld. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's it's been what thirty five years. The hands and the feet should be be able to be yeah. clean now. Should be. Mm. Uh, I did. I did. Uh, you know, I did think that the smaller 
tables, the smaller creators, the, you know, the smaller uh, shops had a chance to shine this year. You know, there, oh, like, yeah. for example, I mean, Funko is awesome, but it is, it is crazy how much Funko has turned, has <laughs> taken over cons over the last five years. It's just insane. Uh, and pretty much I, I saw two stores that were like, as soon as we heard that Funko wasn't coming, we dropped all of our other stock and we brought our Funkos and now we're just going through them. And I'm like, good for you, man. Moving some stock. You clear, know? clear the stock out. <laughs> right. So they were able to do well. All of the people in small press, uh, that I, that I ran into and chatted mm -hmm. with did really well. Um, because not only did they space us out more, there were less small press this year because they didn't have as much space to pack us all in there like sardines. And so we, I think we all did very well. I saw a lot of other just like interesting booths that I don't see every year. Like for example, uh, the golden gaze of New York had a golden gals, uh, set up uh and it, you could they just had a like a little tv and they had yeah. you know the 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 three three women and the the grandmother was missing so if you wanted to you know give them a, a couple bucks donation they would dress you up as the grandmother and like film a scene with you and my <laughs> wife loves the golden girls so she got a kick out of that and uh That's you know awesome. you could you could hear yourself a little more this year Oh, yeah. I, I wore my my birthday present this year and I saw like five other people with the same jersey and they would just call off, you know, call out to me from like 40 feet away and I'd be able to hear them, you know, like my my hearing wasn't shot after 30 minutes. You know, my first day. <laughs> Is that so. from Geek Jersey? Uh, this one isn't. There's there's uh, a lot of great stuff on Geeky Jerseys. Yeah. This one was on uh, an Amazon and it's like uh -huh. crazy good quality. I don't I don't understand how it's on Amazon. Uh, and it was like a third of the price of the geeky jerseys, but, uh, Oh, wow. Great, great, uh, birthday present. And, and, and the AC worked in New York comic con. So I was wearing this <laughs> and just feeling fine all day. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot of good stuff. One other thing I did notice was that they really committed to the general neutral bathrooms. Um, you know, you could mm. go in any bathroom you wanted this year, I know they were testing that out at previous years or like one, one was, you know, your strict uh, men's and women's restrooms. And then the other one on the other side was like a gender neutral gender. I can't talk today. Gender neutral bathroom. <laughs> From what I saw, they were all like that this year, or at least on the con floor. And they, they flowed mm. really well. I've rarely saw a line for <laughs> the bathroom, which is insane <laughs> for Comic-Con. So Who's signing in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right right wait is this so, the line for the bathroom or is this the line for rob liefeld <laughs> yeah they need to get they need to get the people that were working on the bathrooms getting yeah. those going to go downstairs and get the celebrity signings going because <laughs> one was working and one, one was not but uh that that uh a screening of Ghostbusters, even though it was a secret, I think that that just shows that this is what New York Comic Con could be. I think, oh, you know, yeah. we all associate that kind of stuff with San Diego. And I don't think we're going to get to the level of San Diego where these big studios come and debut their shit, you know, for the first time at New York. But that doesn't mean we can't still have screenings there mm -hmm. and can't still have, you know, bigger panels now that it's on site and we don't have people, you know, Huffing it, you know, 10 blocks over to Madison Square Garden or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting. I think there's a lot of big things coming for the con. And this is by far a win for them. This shows that, you know, they stood up and they're like, we're going to try to do it. And by all accounts, I think most people are calling it a success. Well, it's good good to hear. I mean, it, it uh, sucks that I had to miss it, but uh, maybe... Uh, you know, hopefully next year I'll be able to see you in person. Um, Josh, where can they find your stuff? <laughs> uh, Fierce Lit or FierceLiterature.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. And I think I'm still on Twitter. Actually, I don't know if I'm on Twitter. I'm on, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. It's on the website. I'm out there. You'll, you'll find me. <laughs> Uh, anything, Doug, or you... uh, just uh, 
everybody that if anybody's in the capital region or you know even down in new york we've had people come up from the city and connecticut and jersey uh electric city comic-con at schenectady county public library the central library uh downtown schenectady will be uh july 9th it's a saturday 2022 i, I keep writing 2021 because i lost <laughs> that year of 2020 mm -hmm. but 2022 <laughs> saturday from 10 to 4 and uh we're gonna you know we're hoping we can get some you know virtual people in too you know over oh, yeah, zoom yeah. or whatever you know that we couldn't have before because say they're in california and we're you know we're a free con you know we don't mm -hmm. since we're a library we don't charge anything so we're trying to make sure that we bring it bring the experience to the masses that can't get down to new york or can't even get over to empire saratoga comic-con um so we're hoping to shake it up a little bit this year and offer a little bit more well i'm looking forward to get back to consulting <laughs> 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 yeah, so we're uh, we're probably going to start meeting uh, in November, Chad. So I'll let you know. Okay, and uh, we'll get going on that. But if anybody wants to follow Electric City Comic Cons on Facebook, and uh, you can always get to it from scpl.org. Well, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to uh, share your experience and letting me live vicariously through you. <laughs> 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 but uh sorry know. i got a 14 or a 13 year old chad that's already vaccinated <laughs> it's okay hey as soon as as soon as they approve it for you know hopefully by the end of the month you know he's yep. getting it so it's coming Good. up it's coming up oh yep. i'm maybe i'll be able to make albany con so <laughs> yeah there you so. go well again uh you know stay safe stay healthy and uh you're both welcome back anytime. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for having me. All right.